Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be doing a deep dive into the mass, damping, and stiffness matrix. Let's jump right in. In the last videos, we only got the formula for getting the mass, damping, and stiffness matrix. Now we want to look which, which part is actually in those matrices, because the equations of motion are made up of a part coming from the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the non-conservative forces. So here we have the kinetic energy part, here we have the part from the potential energy, and here we have the non-conservative forces. The kinetic energy is dependent on Q double dot, Q dot, and Q, the potential energy only on Q, and the non-conservative forces on Q dot and Q. So if we partially derive with Q double dot, we only have to look at the part with the kinetic energy, because the potential energy is not a function of Q, double dot, and the non-conservative forces are also not a function of a Q double dot. So we only look at the kinetic energy. If we expand that term, we are left with that one. So if we have a closer look at our system, we see that the second part is not a function of Q double dot, because if we derive partially with Q, we're left with maybe a Q and a Q double dot, but definitely no Q, uh, Q dot, but definitely no Q double dot. So this is gone. We only have to look at the first part. So if we look at the first part and do the chain rule of derivation, we get this expression. So we get three terms from one. And if we use these three terms and again do our partial derivative, what we actually want to do is that we see that this part is not a function of Q double dot and this part is not a function of Q double dot. We only see that this part is function of Q double dot. So if we want to get the mass matrix, it's enough to get the kinetic energy and derive it twice partially with our Q dots. So be careful. We originally derived the equation of motion with Q double dot, but now it's enough for us to derive the kinetic energy twice with Q dot. So we don't need to look at the whole system anymore. We only need the kinetic energy for the mass matrix. The mass matrix is symmetric and definite positive. So all eigenvalues are either zero or positive. So larger than zero. Let's see if we can do the same thing for the damping matrix. So we have the damping matrix and the damping matrix is a function of the kinetic energy or, or the part with the kinetic energy and the non-conservative forces because our potential is not a function of Q dot. We cannot unfortunately do a big simplification, but we can split this part in two parts. So we have the matrix G, which we call the gyroscopic matrix, which comes from the kinetic energy, and the matrix C that comes from the non-conservative forces. The gyroscopic matrix is shifting energy from one Q to another, so from one degree of freedom to the other. That's why we have a zero here. If we do a uh, multiplication with our Q dots, we see that this is larger than zero, so we have a energy loss. So our non-conservative forces, this is the proof that we are losing energy in, in that system to dampeners, for example. The gyroscopic matrix is only present with rheonomic constraints and is skew symmetric. So minus G is the same as G transposed. Let's see if we can do the same thing for the stiffness matrix. The stiffness matrix is originally by, uh, designed to with F, D, F, D, Q at equilibrium position, but unfortunately every part is a function of Q. So we have the kinetic, uh, the kinetic energy that is a function of Q, the potential that is a function of Q, and the non-conservative forces that are a function of Q. But if we look at the kinetic energy first, we see that the part of the kinetic energy uh, potential energy is just a 
potential energy partially derived with our Q. And if we do again a partial derivative, we get a double partial derivative of our potential. So we can replace this part with this one. For the kinetic energy, we do the same thing that we did before, and we are left with this part. And we can't do nothing with the non-conservative forces, so they are just copy and pasted. So we can do, again, simplifications just like in the mass matrix, so that we get the stiffness matrix K from a double partial derivative of our potential energy, a double partial derivative of our potential energy with Q dot, uh, with Q again, so we have Q and Q, Q and Q, and the non-conservative forces derived with Q evaluated at our equilibrium position. This is very important. So this is how you can get the mass, dampening, and stiffness matrix if you already know the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the non-conservative forces. So you don't have to derive all the equations of motion, but you actually just need parts of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them and I'll see you in the next video where, we'll be, where we will be discussing what position or what equilibrium is a stable equilibrium and which position is not a stable equilibrium. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you next time.